If you haven't watched this video yet, it's time to remedy that. This story is very interesting, I even got hooked when I read it. Be sure to support this video with a like, and then I will realize that you liked it and will make the next part. Zhou Zhou's parents looked at their son in surprise. They didn't understand what was happening to their kind, sensitive child. At this time, Zhou Zhou was ruthlessly slaughtering the cows he had always treasured. Between the exclamations of the parents and the agonizingly unpleasant sounds came the thin voice of Li Qin, who lived next to the Zhou family. Li Qin said with her usual indifference that she would not marry Zhou Zhou even for a hundred thousand, because the youngest son of the powerful Lin family, promised her twice the amount and a car as a ransom. Zhou Zhou's father and grandmother, with natural indignation in this situation, began to dissuade the boy from killing the cows. The grandmother even argued that she would find her grandson another bride, while the father convinced her that it wasn't worth the expense. Zhou Zhou in response to all the excuses only asked them to leave. Li Qin flared up and left the Zhou house with quick steps. The knife fell out of his hands and the young man rushed toward his parents. After hugging mom and dad tightly, their middle son talked about how happy he was. That his family is fine. The parents have calmed down and the atmosphere is finally more peaceful. But in his thoughts, Zhou Zhou was not calm at all. His head was occupied only with worrying about his family and their protection. Guy loved his family very much his older brother, younger sister, dad, mom, grandma. After hearing about their son's worry, the parents didn't understand who they needed to protect them from and what was even going on, but Zhou Zhou couldn't explain the real reason to them, so he only asked them not to interfere. The father hugged his son tightly with his powerful arm and offered his help. Honestly, it was more of an assertion that he would help than a suggestion. Mom spoke confidently about how her help would be welcome, too. Meanwhile, the entire city was already discussing the Zhou family. Someone said. That Zhou Zhou had gone crazy, some were discussing why Li Qin had dumped him, and some were just laughing. Zhou Zhou didn't care about all the talk about him. He was only thinking about saving his family. Walking along the barn, the guy looked at the time on his phone screen and realized that there are less than four hours left before the beginning of terrible events that could change the life of all mankind beyond recognition. Zhou Zhou ran outside the village and loudly announced that he would pay three people to help him slaughter the cows. Zhou Zhou chose three sturdy young men among those willing, and they set to work. At this time, Zhou Zhou was negotiating on the phone with Boss Zack to sell the goods for cash. Of course, there was no benefit from the deal, but the parents fully trusted their son, because he was never wrong. The young man ordered the gates, doors, windows to be closed and not to leave the house, and he himself, taking a bag of cash with him, quickly drove away. Zhou Zhou was worried about food supplies, weapons, medicine, ammunition. He firmly knew that in two hours, the real chaos would begin. Animals and livestock mutate first. They will become violent, bloodthirsty and start attacking everything and everyone. People who are bitten will soon begin to show the same symptoms. Maddened, they will cease to feel pain and will only lust for flesh. From the slightest bite or scratch, infection can no longer be avoided. Bottom line for the next month more than half of the earth will be infected, they'll be everywhere. In a year, less than a million will be alive. In his past life, Zhou Zhou was unprepared for this scale of disaster and was unable to protect his family. He didn't know why he was back in the past again, but he was sure that if he had a chance to start again, he wouldn't let it slip away and he wouldn't let the trouble happen again. Zhou Zhou procured what he needed from the city. Now he had a diesel generator, a fuel supply, all sorts of cables, flashlights, ropes and batteries, chainsaws, axes, shovels, painkillers, antibiotics, gauze bandages, bandages. In the near future, only firepower can intercept the initiative and enough of them can make a man omnipotent. This required gunpowder, which could only be purchased in large quantities from the head of the Lin family, Lin Jie. Zhou Zhou came to Lin Jie's office to make a deal and purchase gunpowder. Lin Jie sat imperiously in his chair and arrogantly looked at the young man. Zhou Zhou opened the bag that contained a hundred thousand. Lin Jie laughed loudly, thinking that this was a ransom for Li Qin. But upon hearing the true reason for the visit, the smile disappeared from the man's face. The businessman seriously stated that he was not engaged in illegal trade. 
However, Lin Jia did not take into account the fact that Zhou Zhou was far from stupid and was able to quickly remind him of the incident that had happened last December in the forest factory. That's where the girl in the blue dress died. Her death was definitely not an accident. Lin Jia immediately realized the seriousness of the young man's intentions and ordered Li Qin to give the student what he demanded. Following the departing girl, Zhou Zhou promised to help her, to be there for her in a difficult situation, because Uncle Li took good care of his family. Zhou Zhou thanked Lin Jia and left the office. Zhou Zhou returned home, where he was met by his older brother. Opening the door, he inquired about what had happened to his little brother today, but Zhou Zhou wasn't interested in that yet, as he had learned that their little sister still wasn't home. Zhou Zhou was overcome with anxiety, for in her previous life, by this time, she had already returned from school. Had Zhou Zhou's actions caused a butterfly effect? The student jumped into the car and drove after his sister in a flash, reminding his brother to close the gate and stay inside. On the first day it was the animals that became zombies, there were few mutated humans, but the school was in the city where the danger is much higher than in the countryside. Suddenly the car made a loud bang. It was unclear what had happened. The car skidded, but the guy managed to cope with the control and not go off the highway. Zhou Zhou turned around and saw a terrifying huge creature standing on four legs, with red eyes and protruding fangs. He walked along the road. Zhou Zhou realized that it had started earlier than last time. An hour before the start, Zhou Ying sat in the classroom. She had to listen to conversations about what a stupid thing her brother had done, about him going crazy. Zhou Ying couldn't stand these conversations and jumped up from her seat, snatched Xiaoya's classmate's phone and dropped it on the floor, knowing that their teacher was walking by. She reminded Xiaoya that the school's charter stated that phones were not allowed on school grounds and promised to report it to her father. Xiaoya angrily pushed Zhou Ying. The girl fell to the floor near the windowsill. The classmate continued to laugh and grabbed Zhou Ying by the hair. Behind her back she held a clerical knife. Taking it out, Xiaoya threatened to open the girl's mouth this way. At this time, Zhou Zhou arrived at the school. Outside, he saw people running, schoolchildren screaming. It was raining heavily, which added to the fear and anxiety. In the classroom where the fight took place, the atmosphere was even more tense. Xiaoya dropped the knife from her hands and fell to her knees, clasping her mouth with her hand. Blood began to show from her lips. She was getting bigger and bigger. Zhou Ying was startled and ran out of the classroom. Standing in the hallway, she looked out the window and didn't realize what was going on outside. Suddenly the schoolgirl heard a growl not far away. Turning around, she saw a zombie flying at her. He was horrible. His face was ugly. The only thing that made him look human was his school uniform. Zhou Ying, covered her head with her hands, crouched down and the terrifying creature flew past her. Hitting the floor, Zhou Ying turned around and there was Xiaoya standing in the classroom aisle. Zhou Ying was even happy to see her. But it was only when Xiaoyi raised her head that her classmate arrived in horror. Her face was just as hideous one red eye stared malevolently while the other was covered by bangs. Xiaoya pounced on her classmate. There was no strength to resist. All the zombie victim could do was just scream for help as hard as she could. Fortunately, Zhou Zhou heard his sister's cries for help and rushed to the rescue. He already knew that he couldn't defeat the monsters by hand, so he had a knife with a sharp blade in his hands. The guy punched Xiaoya aptly and sharply. It fell to the floor, but another creature was coming toward the student. With a wide swing of his knife, the student chopped off half of the zombie's horrible and frightening head. After running out of school, the brother and sister got into the car and quickly drove home. The pictures on the streets were horrifying. Everything was surrounded by ugly, death-hungry, bloodthirsty, painful monsters. Zhou Ying didn't fully realize the seriousness of what was happening. She felt like she was in some computer game about a zombie attack or apocalypse. The brother explained to his little sister that the world had changed and this was just the beginning. Every minute there will be more and more zombies attacking people and mercilessly taking their lives. You have to learn to adapt to these conditions and keep fighting for your life and the lives of your loved ones. The guy assured his sister that he would always be there for her and would always protect the family. Zhou Ying believed him unconditionally. The brother and sister finally arrived home where their frightened and worried parents were waiting for them. Mom heard the screams outside, but listening to Zhou Zhou, 
they stayed at home and didn't dare to go out. However, the shouting stopped. Zhou Zhou pondered. In his past life, there were few people left in the village. In addition, mutated people are afraid of the sun, so there was plenty of time for the Zhou family to prepare fortifications. The most important thing now was to get through the night. The whole family was in a state of bewilderment, fear and panic. They didn't understand what was going on and asked various questions, but Zhou Zhou was in no hurry to explain everything. It was important to take care of safety now. Zhou Zhou told his family that he wouldn't be away for long. Everyone was worried about his son, his brother, but also trusted him. At school, when Zhou Zhou showed incredible strength and defeated two zombies, his sister thought his abilities were unique. Now he wondered about that burst of strength himself, for his body was behaving differently at that moment. He was in a hurry to test all his hunches. He was in a hurry to find the man. After all, if she has the abilities that she had in her previous life, it will be an important advantage in such a difficult struggle. Lin Jie was tense. He understood that Zhou Zhou had stocked up a lot of supplies and even black powder back in the afternoon for a reason. But Lin Jie thought, if Zhou Zhou knew about these events back in the day, then he was in that case anyway, and thus should die. Zhou Zhou's words increasingly seemed to be true. After all, indeed, in the village out of nowhere began to disappear heaps of people, but after all, the place is very remote, all around the forests. Zhou had offered with even more vigor to have Lin Jie come with him, but he justified himself by saying that a simple man of the people was afraid of such a brutal killer. In the end, ostensibly for the safety of the villagers and to locate the position of the missing men, he agreed to go. But would such a coward go alone? Of course not. Lin Jie brought the tough guys with him. Then Xia's voice was heard from the crowd, who decided to go as well. Uncle Nu and Huang discouraged her, arguing that she should not act so rashly until they had figured out what was going on. But Xia Bingbing was certain she must take the initiative since the village secretary was missing. Worried about the missing residents, he set out to find them, but never returned. Huang's wife was also missing, so he also decided to go with Zhou Zhou. Uncle Nu couldn't stay away, so he decided to set up a place for people here and use the vans for the trip. Everyone hoped for the best. Upon reaching the place, the heroes saw the secretary's car. Nu determined from the hood temperature that the car was recently shut off. But there was no way Wan could reach the secretary. Zhou Zhou recalled that the last time the wave of zombies started three days later, they had kept their way from here, but there was no way to investigate the source of this crowd back then. If the flow of time matches the past, the problems of that horde become solvable, but the most important thing for Zhou Zhou was to gain Bing Bing's trust. Now, in Zhou's opinion, everyone needed to go a little deeper into the forest and look around carefully, but before they did, Uncle Nu shouted to the secretary. Everything in the forest indicated that a large number of people had been there recently footprints, broken branches, traces of blood. Zhou Zhou firmly knew that everything was happening too fast for the first day. There is definitely an explanation for this. Before the boy was a deep and dark cave. After shining the flashlight inside, Zhou came to the conclusion that it was too dangerous for everyone to go, so he decided to go first and check things out. Only Lin Jie was against it. He thought that there might be a crime scene ahead that Zhou had committed, and by going alone, he could cover his tracks. Zhou Zhou wildly annoyed Lin, so calling him a cowardly dog, the student offered Lin Jie to keep him company if he wasn't afraid of death. Lin Jie was indeed afraid. Suddenly, a terrifying dark green hand appeared from the cave, followed by Huang's wife, Ah Xian. Wan rushed to her with questions about how she got here and stories about how worried he'd been about her all day. Only Zhou Zhou knew that it was no longer Ah Xian. Wan was happy that his wife was okay, not realizing the full horror of the situation. If Zhou hadn't slaughtered Ah Xian at that very minute, Huang would have become a similar creature as well. But he didn't realize it at all. In his eyes, Zhou looked like a murderer who had slaughtered his wife in front of her loving husband. Huang kept going on and on about Zhou being a murderer, asking for Ah Xian to bring him back, but it was too late. Wan was furious. He called Zhou Zhou a ruthless killer and threw himself at him, swinging the bat, but there was a second, and the bat flew aside with its owner. Zhou was calm, he understood Wan and told him that it was okay to be angry, resentful, and regretful. 
Zhou Zhou tried to explain to Huang that it was impossible to change anything, because Ah Xian had become a zombie, and the only way out was to kill her. But Huang didn't believe that Zhou Zhou wanted to save the living people, he claimed that he was talking nonsense. Huang spoke with unbearable pain about Ah Xian, about what a loss she had become to him, and asked if Zhou would have spoken so calmly if a loved one had been killed before his eyes. These words caused Zhou Zhou to feel incredibly angry. He grabbed Wan by the throat and said he had been too frugal with him. Zhou's words were fair. Wan really should have thanked Zhou for being willing to take everyone here himself to clear his doubts, and even saving his life. Zhou Zhou explained lucidly that if anyone laid a finger on his family, they would be finished off immediately. Xia and Uncle Nu ran to Huang's aid, shouting that Zhou should let him go. The only cheerful person in the whole situation was Lin Jia, who looked at what was happening and called Zhou a crazy murderer. Suddenly, someone abruptly fell Zhou Zhou, pushing him away from Huang. Zhou was surprised to see his older brother in front of him when he opened his eyes. Zhou asked his brother in surprise where he came from. His brother reached out to lift his brother off the ground and explained to him that everyone was worried about Zhou's long absence and he had gone to look for him. Huang Tao lay on the ground, washing away his tears, asking for forgiveness from Ah Xian. Elder brother Zhou loudly ordered Huang to stand up, then told him the bitter truth that Ah Xian could not be brought back, that although Zhou was a dumbass, he had saved his life, and to continue living at least for the sake of his villagers. Huang calmed down and acknowledged Big Brother Zhou's rightness. Hearing all these words, Zhou only thought of his older brother. He is as before always ready to help and reassure. Though they were siblings, their characters were quite different. The older brother was always popular. And Zhou never really had any real friends, but no matter what, he was always there for his younger brother, helping, supporting and protecting him, but this time Zhou asked his brother to let him protect himself. Suddenly, Screams were heard from the cave. Someone asked for help. Xia Bingbing recognized the secretary's voice, she was ready to immediately run to save him, but Zhou Zhou stopped her and said that in this situation, one should not act rashly. Following from the cave came a sound that was already familiar to Zhou Zhou. It was a zombie. Huang asked Lin Jie if it was really a zombie, because then the secretary was no longer alive. Lin said in anger that he would go there himself. His goofy, pumped-up assistant went in his master's place. The last thing heard outside was a scream. The flashlight flew out of the man's hands. A horde of zombies emerged from the cave. There were a lot of them. There were many horrible creatures coming out of the cave. One of them walked in front and held the torso of Lin Jie's assistant in his hands. Lin Jie was shocked, all he could do was ask what was going on here. A huge crowd of zombies was just around the corner. Zhou Zhou didn't understand why there were so many of them this time. Running away would certainly not have been possible for everyone. Zhou ordered everyone to step back and himself stood at the head of the knife, but suddenly someone from behind touched his shoulder. Zhou turned around. It was his older brother who joked with a smirk about how he wasn't the only one to flaunt his muscles. Senior Zhou boldly attacked the zombies, they scattered around, but after a couple minutes, they were already climbing back up. Big Brother was surprised that they could still get back on their feet after his attack. Zhou chuckled in response and indicated that their weaknesses included their brains and sunlight. Zhou let go of the joke that his older brother was apparently losing his grip, but his brother reminded him that there was enough power to beat him. The brothers then joined forces and decided that Zhou would be the one with the knife and the older brother in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The brothers skillfully attacked one by one, but the zombies were too many. Then Zhou decided that the others needed to shine flashlights in their faces and hit them on the head, warning everyone of the danger of being bitten. One didn't understand how the brothers were so dashing when the others couldn't even kill one. Uncle Nu told in response to Huang's musings that the boys had been learning martial arts from Master Zhang since childhood. Huang shared with Nu that he realized his mistake towards Zhou. Finally, the brothers dispersed these terrifying creatures. The older brother teased Zhou with questions about where he had time to gain strength. And Zhou Zhou smilingly offered to arrange a master class just for him. Zhou Zhou turned his attention to Xia, who was clearly frightened. The young man reassured Bing Bing, saying that everything would be fine. Xia Bing Bing thanked her brothers. The older brother told the girl to only thank Zhou Zhou, 
for he was the one who had been protecting her all along. Puzzled, Zhou went to look at the state of the others. Zhou Zhou saw Lin Jie's assistant who had been bitten. He called out for the boss, but he wasn't there. What followed were only cries for mercy. Looking behind the tree, Zhou Zhou saw Lin Jie who was cowardly hiding. Zhou Zhou called him lucky because he turned out to be uninfected and advised him to keep hiding and not make any sounds, wishing him good luck. Screams were heard from the forest. Lin Jie called out to Zhou Zhou, mentioned the devil, and promised to kill Zhou Zhou. Lin Jie held his palm to his mouth. Meanwhile, the others stood outside the cave, from which voices were heard again. Someone was asking for help, for rescue. Xia Bingbing recognized the secretary in her voice. Zhou ordered everyone back to their cars and decided to check this time himself. His brother stayed with him. Xia wanted to say something, but Zhou firmly explained that everyone would only be a hindrance, not a help, and that they should go back to doing what they should be doing, and the brothers would stay behind to find a secretary. Uncle Niu agreed with Zhou Zhou and called everyone back. The village, indeed, needed them. Xia Bingbing accepted it and didn't mind. Zhou Zhou hoped that he could prevent that horde of zombies that would flood the place in a couple of days. He knew that the survivors in the village were staying on Xia Bingbing. Elder brother Zhou had doubts that the secretary could still be saved, after all these zombies had all come from the depths of the cave. Zhou agreed. Zhou Zhou was telling his brother that if a secretary was bitten, there was no saving him. But the cry for help that Zhou Zhou had just heard was not like the roar of a zombie. Zhou Zhou came to the conclusion that there was still hope and it was not worth stopping the search. At the same time, the elder brother began to tell Zhou Zhou about Xia Bingbing as a student, she had come here to become a village official, and only with the secretary's help would she be able to adjust to the local life, so it was not at all surprising that she was excited for him. Zhou Zhou abruptly cut off his brother's story. There was no limit to their surprise. On the ground, leaning against a pile of rocks that lay against the cave wall, was a skeleton. Kneeling down in front of the skeleton, Zhou Zhou marveled at the fact that unlike other zombies, this one had become a mummy. Eldest brother surprisingly interrogated Zhou Zhou. He didn't understand how that was possible. Looking closely, the guys noticed a hole of fairly significant size in the skeleton's chest. The older brother suggested that it might have been the secretary. But suddenly the cries for help were heard again from the depths. The secretary sat back as the Zhou brothers approached him. He asked for help, but when the secretary turned around, the boys froze in horror. The secretary also became a zombie, he talked about being hungry. The older brother commanded a retreat back, but it was immediately realized that the zombie was too fast and there was no escape. The brothers made the decision to attack. Zhou Zhou swiftly attacked the monster. The zombie was saying he was hungry again, asking for help. After striking him with a stab, Zhou Zhou realized that his skin was too hard. As he was about to strike next, Zhou Zhou only had time to shout out that it was a mutant zombie before he was flung away and hit the ground. The mutant zombie was significantly stronger than the others. An older brother with a bright lantern rushed to Zhou Zhou's aid. He told his brother about the light being effective and defeated the mutant zombie. Having escaped such a dangerous opponent, Big Brother asked Zhou about what had happened and why this zombie had such incredible strength. To which Zhou Zhou replied that it was a mutated zombie. His older brother questioned him in surprise. At that time, Zhou Zhou spoke more about the mutation associated with animal contamination. In rare cases, a combination of the two DNAs is also mutated. Mutants are much stronger than normal zombies, and some of them have unusual abilities. Zhou Zhou suggested that in this case, the mutation might be due to the large number of infected bats in the cave, so it was from the bite of one of them that the secretary mutated. These zombies are extremely difficult to fight in the dark, but they can't stand up to bright lights anyway. It was light enough outside, so they wouldn't be able to get out. His older brother, in response to Zhou's story, asked him how long ago he became an expert on zombies, but Zhou Zhou only replied that his knowledge was solely from zombie books. Zhou Zhou then quickly changed the topic and suggested that his brother come back the next day with equipment and kill this thing. Suddenly, many bats flew out of the cave. Followed by that mutant zombie. He flew at the brothers with such speed that running was definitely not an option. In flight, the monster shattered the flashlight and the light source was no more. 
the strength to defeat him was also lacking. Swiftly, the zombie pinned Senior Zhou against the wall and opened its horrible maw wide. The guy was holding back the monster with his last strength. A little more and it would bite him. Zhou Zhou realized that only a large light source that was more powerful than a mutant zombie would help in this case. Suddenly, Zhou Zhou was suddenly blinded by a bright sharp light. It was Xia Bingbing driving the car, she was loudly urging Zhou away from the road. Zhou Zhou surprisingly interrogated himself, is it Xia? Xia Bingbing pinned the mutant zombie against a tree. After getting out of the car, the girl asked the guys if they were okay and wondered where the monster had come from, when suddenly she saw the secretary in front of her, or rather its horrible likeness. Zhou Zhou informed Xia Bingbing that it was impossible to save the secretary. Zhou Zhou was insanely glad that Madame Xia had returned to save them, otherwise death would have been unavoidable. Suddenly, the conversation was interrupted by Senior Zhou. He started to crumple and ask for something to tell his family, but he was interrupted by Zhou. He honestly didn't want to believe that his brother had been bitten by that thing, but the older of the brothers said he had been careless. He apologized to his brother and said he was leaving his family on Zhou Zhou. Zhou Zhou could not lose his brother again, so he resolutely stated that he knew what he had to do. Zhou Zhou didn't understand why he had to protect his brother again, why things had turned out this way. Suddenly, he remembered the existence of a mutant gene that could save the situation. Grabbing a knife, Zhou Zhou rushed towards the dead mutant and chopped its head with force. Senior Zhou and Xia Bingbing shouted for him to stop, they didn't understand what Zhou Zhou was doing. Zhou Zhou explained that the mutant zombies are able to control simple zombies. Their virus spreads throughout their body, but most importantly in the back of the head, which is the core of the zombie. The older brother reassured Zhou Zhou, saying that there was still a chance to be saved before the symptoms manifested. But Zhou Zhou firmly knew that this was the only chance to save himself. He told him that if he ate it now, there was a chance that his brother would turn into a superhuman immune to the zombie virus. Of course, there was a higher chance that his older brother would turn into a zombie like him, but if there was even the slightest chance of saving him, Zhou Zhou was willing to do anything. The older of Zhou Zhou's brothers swallowed the mutant gene and asked the younger one how many days it would take to realize everything. Zhou Zhou replied that two days would be enough. Then, without giving up hope for the best, the older brother went deep into the cave, asking him to seal the passage if he didn't come out in two days, and in case he became a superhuman, asking him not to be too jealous. Zhou Zhou smiled in response to his brother's words and said that he would wait for him. No one suspected that at this time, behind the tree was Lin Jie, who endlessly wanted to ruin the brothers' lives. In the morning, Zhou Ying ran into the room where Zhou Zhou was and shouted at her brother to get up, but she saw that he was already awake. When Zhou Zhou looked at Zhou Ying, he involuntarily smiled. Ying was indeed dressed very funny. She was wearing a large armor that made the whole situation comical. Calling her a weirdo, Zhou Zhou asked why she was dressed like that. In response, Zhou Ying said that she made the armor herself to be safe, because it was Zhou Zhou who said that everyone in the family should be safe. Zhou Zhou poked his finger at Zhou Ying's metal chest and asked how this armor could help her protect herself from zombies. Zhou Ying rolled on the floor with a scream. Rolling down the stairs all the way to the street, Ying Ying screamed for Zhou Zhou to stop pushing her. Looking at the top of the brick fence, Zhou Zhou was surprised. At the very top, throwing his leg over the fence and stacking bricks, sat Zhou Zhou's father. Seeing his son, he rejoiced and, smiling broadly, headed towards Zhou Zhou. Taking a barrel of gunpowder in his hands, the father with his usual optimism asked the boy where he got such a treasure, and took one barrel for the game. The son tried to explain to his father that it was not a toy at all, but his father advised him not to be greedy. Turning to Zhou Ying, Zhou Zhou saw an equally amusing picture Xia was lying on the ground in makeshift armor, and Zhou Zhou's mother was standing over her with a pot on her head. In her hands, she held a stick, which she swung at her daughter. For Zhou Zhou, the behavior of this family was already familiar. Zhou asked the mother if there was anything for breakfast at home. To which she replied that if he had nothing to do, he could make his own breakfast. Zhou Zhou then said that he would go look for something to eat. Suddenly, someone rang the doorbell of Zhou Zhou's house. Opening the door, Zhou Zhou saw Xia Bingbing. Surprised, he asked the girl what she was doing here. 
Xia Bingbing was clearly embarrassed, but still said that she had come on business. She asked Zhou Zhou for a favor. At this moment, Zhou Zhou's mom also looked out from behind the door and invited Xia Bingbing to come through. Xia in turn said that she didn't want to disturb their family, but she needed Zhou Zhou's help. Then Xia Bingbing said that the village committee had organized a defense reinforcement team, and work was in full swing, but there was no way she could contact the county police department. Since yesterday evening, there has been no word from them, the signal has been lost. Zhou Zhou took out his phone and made sure there was no signal. Xia Bingbing anxiously continued to tell him that she was afraid that if there was a communication problem, they would interfere. Xia Bingbing asked Zhou Zhou to accompany her to the county administrative center to try to contact the others. Zhou Zhou didn't have time to say anything thickly because Xia Bingbing started apologizing for showing up at Zhou Zhou's house, knowing what had happened to Zhou Zhou's brother, but only he could help her. It was very important for Xia Bingbing to get to the administrative center, so she was even willing to tolerate Zhou Zhou's scolding, dislike, and contempt. Zhou Zhou's mom intervened in the conversation. She asked Xia Bingbing to stop this talk, because if it wasn't for her help yesterday, Zhou Zhou wouldn't have come home. She also said that Zhou Xu's situation had nothing to do with Xia. Mom called Zhou Zhou away and asked Xia Bingbing to wait for a while. Mom and Zhou Zhou went inside the house, where she asked him not to worry about his parents, as parents should protect their children, not be a burden to them. Of course, there was no shortage of jokes about Zhou Zhou being as serious as an old man. Mom also reminded her youngest son of his sister's worries. Mom asked Zhou Zhou to trust his family, because they believe that Zhou Xu will be able to return home. After that, the mother gave her son a knife and told him to use it wisely and not to damage the blade. Following that, the mother shouted to Zhou Zhou to do what he had to do and tell her all the details when he returned. Xia Bingbing said that they would be back soon, and Zhou Zhou told his mother to close the gate and be careful. As she saw Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing leaving with a glance, mom thought that they looked good together. At this time, Zhou Xu was sitting in the cave, waiting to see what would happen to him next. Suddenly, he heard some strange sounds. At first he thought that Zhou Xu didn't wait and came after all, but on the floor, the guy noticed a puddle. When Zhou Xu touched it with his hand, he smelled gasoline. And the cave burst into flames. Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing meanwhile rode in the car to Xia's not-so-clear singing. Zhou Zhou was sure that she really had no hearing or voice. Xia Bingbing apologized and said that she sings when she is nervous, although she herself realizes that she is not good at it. In response, Zhou Zhou laughed and assumed that Xia Bingbing was really very nervous since she was singing so desperately. But the thought flashed through Zhou Zhou's mind that this was really the Xia Bingbing he knew in his past life. Many strange things had happened in this life, and Zhou Zhou couldn't completely rely on his past experiences, so he would have to rely on Xia to fight the horrible and cruel zombies as well. The only thing Zhou Zhou was firmly convinced of was that he had no right to let Xia Bingbing make a mistake. Zhou Zhou approached Xia Bingbing and suggested that she move in with the Zhou family. Xia Bingbing was surprised by such a suggestion and turned away to the window in embarrassment. She asked Zhou Zhou why she should live with him. Zhou Zhou could not give the real reason as it was due to the girl's superpowers, so he simply said that Xia Bingbing needed him and he could not let her get hurt. The ridiculous silence was interrupted by something strange, causing the car to be unable to go any further. The guys got out of the car and saw that the entire road was littered with rocks and huge mountains of earth. Zhou Zhou knew that there was no such thing last time. He realized that many things were changing and if the roads were blocked, it would be difficult to bring supplies. Zhou Zhou made the decision to return to the village first. Xia Bingbing agreed, after all, it would be better this way. Zhou Zhou was very worried, after all, the supplies at home would not last long, there was no signal, and the road was blocked. Something told him that all this was not good. Suddenly, Zhou Zhou's car went into a skid, he struggled to control. Just a little more, Xia Bingbing and Zhou Zhou might just crash. When Zhou Zhou got out of the car, he saw car spikes on the road, which had clearly been placed by someone clearly for a reason. At that moment, someone called out to Zhou Zhou with a smirk peculiar to only one person. Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing turned around and saw Lin Jie. 
He was squatting on a fence along the road, smiling and holding a gun. Lin Jie said that he was jealous of Zhou Zhou since he was already cooing so nicely with the beautiful worker. In response, Zhou Zhou asked what he wanted, to which Lin Jie explained his appearance by saying that he wanted to avenge his men that Zhou Zhou had killed. But Zhou Zhou was not confused and told Lin Jie to chop up the zombies if he wanted to avenge his people. Of course, Zhou Zhou could not help but remind Lin Jie of his cowardice as soon as one of his men was in trouble. In turn, Lin Jie called Zhou Zhou a petty scoundrel and pointed a gun at him, saying that he would finish him off. It seemed that Zhou Zhou was not afraid at all. He only asked Lin Jie if he could kill him. But Lin Jie was so full of anger and hatred that he was able to pull the trigger. At this moment, Zhou Zhou heard Xia Bingbing scream behind him. Anger was overwhelming Zhou Zhou. But Lin Jie only laughed and asked if Zhou Zhou was upset. He said that if he wanted to straighten out a disciple, he should start with those around him. And then he told Zhou Zhou the most frightening thing. He told Zhou Zhou that he saw Zhou Xu getting infected yesterday and decided to help deal with him, so he blew up the mine. At this time, Zhou Zhou rushed towards Lin Jie. Xia Bingbing tried to stop him, but it was impossible. Lin Jie only smiled and said that this was exactly what he had been waiting for. The moment he pointed the muzzle of his gun at Zhou Zhou, something incredible happened. A huge beast with bright red eyes rushed at him from the bushes. It bit off Lin Jie's arm, and he was already lying on the pavement covered in blood and screaming in pain. Zhou Zhou was shocked, for this was a second-rank zombie wolf. At this time, Zhou Ying stood on the balcony of the house and pondered why Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing had still not returned. Someone knocked on the door and asked if Zhou Zhou was home. Going upstairs, Zhou Ying saw Uncle Nu and Huang. She told them that her brother had gone out for a while and asked what was wrong. To this, Huang advised her to look at the mountain. Bringing the camera on her phone closer, Zhou Ying saw a huge number of zombies there. Lin Jie, bleeding, lay on the pavement and wondered if this was death. A zombie wolf stood over him and looked fiercely at Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing. Lin Jie told Zhou Zhou that he was glad because they would also die. Zhou Zhou looked straight into the eyes of the terrifying and incredibly huge creature. Suddenly, they threw themselves at each other. A fountain of blood gushed out from the creature's body. Zhou Zhou was confident that he could defeat it, because fortunately, it was still daytime and the zombie wolf was not that strong. He realized that if it was night now, he and Xia Bingbing would have died together. The wolf had to be killed before the sun set. Suddenly, Zhou Zhou was overcome with terror. There was still a whole horde of zombies following the wolf. Zhou Zhou couldn't understand where so many zombies came from, after all, they had killed their leader, the village secretary. He didn't understand where they came from, but suddenly there were also bats. There was no time to ponder. Zhou Zhou noticed that the wound on the wolf's body was healing. This only meant that the zombie wolf had the ability to regenerate. Suddenly, the wolf jumped down and opened its mouth wide. Zhou Zhou flew backwards. Piles of rocks began to fly apart. Something incredible was happening. The zombie wolf had Zhou Zhou in its jaws, but something started to appear around the guy. It was that very feeling. Zhou Zhou could feel the very strength inherent in him. The wolf with all its gigantic mass flew aside, blood gushing out of its mouth. Zhou Zhou rushed towards it with unrealistic speed. Xia Bingbing looked at him rapturously. The surroundings were so terrifying. Blood, rocks, Xia Bingbing didn't realize if Zhou Zhou was still alive. And then in the midst of all this horror, he appeared and informed Xia Bingbing that he was here. Xia Bingbing was shocked by Zhou Zhou's strength, she said that although she knew how strong he was, but in this situation, she was surprised that he hadn't been eaten. It seemed to Xia Bingbing that Zhou Zhou was capable of getting out of absolutely any situation. Zhou Zhou told Xia Bingbing that his abilities had suddenly increased. He didn't really understand why the superpower had manifested in him, after all, in his previous life, no one could do such a thing without a zombie core. There was no time to talk anymore. He ordered Xia Bingbing to prepare to run, as zombies were everywhere and the girl was injured, so Zhou Zhou made the decision to carry her on his back. Lastly, he warned Xia that the path would be difficult. 
Zhou Zhou ran very fast as they were followed by a pack of zombies, and Xia Bingbing only asked him not to let go. Here, the village was already coming into view. Zhou Zhou was worried that there were too many zombies and it was unlikely that he would be able to kill them all. Zhou Zhou was afraid that Xia Bingbing would get hurt. Zhou Zhou and Xia Bingbing heard an explosion that reached the car from which the fire songs were coming from. The zombies scattered in different directions. Zhou Zhou saw his father and Zhou Ying in the car. The Zhou family was rushing in a car. Zhou's father told them to throw ground cocktail bottles out of the window to fight off the zombies. Zhou Ying got excited and said that what she saw was breathtaking. Zhou Zhou remembered that there should be a first aid kit in the car. After finding the first aid kit, Zhou Ying took the bag and asked Zhou Zhou how can you touch a girl's legs so brazenly if you are not in a relationship. In response, Zhou Zhou called his sister an obnoxious girl. Zhou Zhou asked his father about the atmosphere at home. In the back seat, Zhou Zhou kept teasing Xia Bingbing, saying how beautiful her legs were, to which Xia asked her not to say that. Her father told Zhou Zhou not to worry, because the zombies hadn't reached the village yet. Zhou Zhou asked if the father had made the explosives himself. Zhou Zhou, the head of the family, said that when he was young, he was obsessed with explosives, studied a lot about making them, and then became an expert in mine explosions. But after the ore in the mine was exhausted, Zhou's father never touched dynamite. He wanted to make firecrackers for fun, but Zhou Zhou's mother wouldn't allow it. Zhou Zhou then asked his father about the kitchen explosion last year, to which his father replied that it wasn't his doing and he couldn't have done that. Zhou's father shook his head and asked him not to tell his mom about it. Finally, the Zhou family and Xia Bingbing arrived home. Suddenly, screams were heard from behind the fence. The father rushed to the door, but it was locked. He didn't have the key. Zhou Zhou kicked open the door and they saw mom holding a zombie by the throat. She said she hadn't seen Mrs. Zhang from the neighboring village in a long time. The family was surprised at what they saw, but mom was fine. She said the creature popped out of nowhere and scared her. It turned out that Mrs. Zhang owed her mom money for losing at cards. Zhou's mom had given the envelope with the money to Ms. Zhang when her son went to college, and she didn't give anything to Zhou Zhang and gossiped about their family. At that time, mom said that Ms. Zhang was finished and destroyed her. Zhou Zhang asked his father in surprise where their mother had learned to swear like that. To which the father, lighting a cigarette, replied that Zhou Zhou's mother had always known how, and when she was young, she had dug through all the nearby villages. When it came to fighting, even five men couldn't handle her. She was really good looking. Only after meeting Zhou did she become much softer, even though she was the one who forced her father to marry her. After listening to Zhou's father's story, his mother shouted that if it wasn't for her, there was no telling where he would be now. She then switched to Zhou Zhou and started scolding Zhou Zhou for breaking the fence. At this moment, Xia Bingbing intervened in the conversation. She asked Aunt Zhou not to be angry with her son, after all, he was just worried about his mom. Mama Zhou immediately softened when she saw Xia Bingbing and said that she was just joking because she was the kindest person in the world. The warm atmosphere was interrupted by the nasty roar of zombies climbing over the fence. Huang and Uncle NYU said that the zombies were getting bigger and bigger, they were spreading throughout the village, and there was a whole crowd coming from the west. At this time, Zhou Zhou once again felt incredibly strong and firmly knew that he had to finish them off. In his previous life, Zhou Zhou's entire family had suffered because of such a sudden attack by a zombie horde. Now, however, things were different. Everyone was ready for battle and was not going to leave the creatures even a chance to win. Zhou Zhou felt that this time was different because he was not fighting alone. All of his family members were with him, which meant that they would definitely survive this terrifying attack. The zombies were getting bigger and bigger, but the entire Zhou family was sticking together. Xia Bingbing shouted that the zombies were trembling with fear, but Zhou Zhou replied that they had no fear. The zombies had pitchforks in their hands. Zhou Zhou's father was in a panic, he started shouting that the zombies were infecting more and more people and now wanted to besiege them as well. Zhou Zhou realized that someone was controlling them. At the very top, Zhou Zhou saw their leader. It couldn't be. It was Lin Jie. The zombies were advancing on Zhou's house. Zhou's father started attacking them with gunpowder, 
Zhou Ying helping him with it. The zombies were attacking from different directions, as if they were using some tactics. Everyone was tense and focused on defense. Zhou Zhou ordered his parents to go to the courtyard and hold the defense there. The rest of them, he decided to take over. His father shouted after his son, but Zhou Zhou went into battle. He once again felt a surge of supernatural strength. The blood boiled in his body. Zhou Zhou was ready to smash those vile creatures. In his past life, Zhou Zhou had only seen such powers once before. It was possessed by the commander of the Dawn Army, one of the strongest warriors. He didn't understand why his blood Buddha ability was so much weaker. Zhou Zhou decided to figure it out later, because what was more important now was that these abilities were enough to protect the family. Zhou Zhou was not going to be afraid of this crowd, after all, if one dealt with who was controlling them, they would become less dangerous. At this time, Zhou Zhou walked towards Lin Jie. Zhou Zhou laughed at the fact that Lin Jie was thinking of restraining him with such small zombies. At this time, Bing Bing was in the courtyard fighting with the zombies. Mama Zhou was worried about her and asked about her condition. Xia Bingbing thanked Mama Zhou for her concern and asked where Zhou Zhou was. Zhou Ying intervened in the conversation and told Xia Bingbing that her brother was like a superhero, smashing zombies left and right. Zhou Ying asked Xia Bingbing not to worry because he was definitely safe and sound. At this moment, Zhou Ying turned around and saw Zhou Ying lying down. He shouted to his sister to move away and run away from here. A zombie bear towered over him. At this time, a man approached the house. His only thought was that he couldn't let these things take Zhou Zhou's life. Zhou Zhou fought courageously, but his strength was lacking. The whole family was worried about Zhou Zhou and decided to help him, but suddenly someone else intervened in the fight. Unexpectedly, he told Zhou Zhou that he had long wondered how it was that he had suddenly become so strong. It turned out that he could do that too. This was Zhou Xu. Smiling, he apologized to his brother for being a little late. Zhou Xu was shocked to see his older brother, after all, he didn't expect to see him anymore. Zhou Xu said that he had to spend time in the mountains to get used to such a huge strength. Zhou Xu then showed his brother how to use that power. He almost destroyed a rank 2 zombie, but its skin was too thick. Zhou Xu asked to keep that monster, and Zhou Zhou told him to do what he had to do. Zhou Zhu happily agreed. So many nights Zhou Zhou woke up in a cold sweat from nightmares and hated this cruel world every time, but he hated himself even more for his weakness. This time, he found his strength. Zhou Zhou saw that Lin Jie was still alive and decided to eliminate the threat. Lin Jie claimed that the old Lin Jie had already died, and the one in front of him was the new Lin. He said that that pitiful human body was no longer there. Lin Jie revealed that he was half human and half zombie, so not only did he retain his sanity, but he could also control a crowd of zombies. He felt like he was the king of this world. With that, he thanked Zhou Zhou for killing the zombie wolf, because 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 of that, Lin Jie was able to easily take out the core from the back of its head and eat it. Lin Jie started to talk about how he would like to take Zhou Zhou away from him. But Zhou Zhou said that he was too talkative for a coward. Zhou Zhou realized that he needed to reduce the pressure of the ordinary zombies on his family because then there would be no one to control the crowd. Lin Jie wasn't easy to kill because he had passed on the wolf's regeneration ability. Lin Jie talked about how they were different now, and it was his time. He demanded Zhou Zhou to surrender and said that the corpses of the slain would become his loyal soldiers and the flesh would become his food, because humans were just dumb cattle to him now, so he brought a crowd of zombies here to cleanse the place. Lin Jie asked if Zhou Zhou liked his gift. Zhou Zhou's father, Uncle NYU, and Huang could no longer keep the fence clear of zombies. Uncle NYU told Zhou Zhou's father about it, who in turn asked him to wait a bit, saying that his sons would quickly kill all the zombies. Zhou Xu finally defeated the second rank zombie, telling him how it wasn't easy and how with such a huge beast, you can close any gap. The father asked his eldest son where Zhou Xu was now. There were still too many zombies, so Zhou Xu made the decision to stay here and guard the house. He was confident that Zhou Zhou could handle himself due to his incredible strength. At the same time, Zhou Zhou was unable to defeat Lin Jie. Lin Jie asked him if this was all Zhou Zhou was capable of. He suggested that he give up and calm down, 
but Zhou Zhou was not the type to give up so easily. Zhou Zhou stabbed him again, saying that talking to this rude man was too much of an honor. He called Lin Jia a bastard who also dared to make a quip against the Zhou family. Zhou Zhou said that he would simply kill Lin Jia. But the opponent was not the easiest, he was once again unharmed and shouted that in that case, he should sentence Zhou Zhou to execution. Lin Jia then pounced on Zhou Zhou with incredible strength. Zhou Zhou was amazed at this speed, to which Lin Jia said that this was also strength. Zhou Zhou didn't understand why the effect of the Blood Buddha ability wasn't working. Lin Jia praised Zhou Zhou for managing to dodge the blow and seemed to have decided to put his claws right into his guts. Zhou Zhou realized that his stamina was dropping too fast and he wouldn't be able to hold the Blood Buddha effect for long, so the next attack would definitely determine the outcome of the battle. Lin Jia walked over to Zhou Zhou and told him not to engage in self-deception. An explosive device then flew at Lin Jia with lightning speed. There was a loud explosion and the space was filled with flames, from which Lin Jia asked if Zhou Zhou was really thinking of killing him this way. When the flames dissipated, Lin Jia thought that Zhou Zhou had escaped as he was nowhere to be found. Lin Jia asked if he had really decided to run away and then laughed and said that the smell of his blood was strong enough that running away was impossible. Zhou Zhao's arm was already bandaged. He barely managed to stop the bleeding. Zhou Zhou had no idea that the Blood Buddha's abilities could heal wounds. His strength was running low and would only be enough for one attack. Lin Jia laughed at the fact that Zhou Zhou had hidden in the gas station. Of course, he had found him. Lin Jia asked Zhou Zhou if he knew why wolves only went out to hunt when they had no shortage of food. Without waiting for an answer, Lin Jia explained that wolves do this in order to fully experience the fear of their prey, and after all attempts, the victim still falls into the clutches of the hunter. This struck him as amusing. Lin Jia immediately noticed the ground cocktail trap that Zhou Zhou had prepared for him. Lin Jia attacked the place with the most accurate blood scent, but Zhou Zhou did not find Zhou Zhou there. Lin Jia was shocked to see only Zhou Zhou's jacket there. That was when Zhou Zhou started to attack. Lin Jia grabbed his face and started yelling that Zhou Zhou was a jerk and asking what he was doing, to which Zhou Zhou replied that it was just salt. Zhou Zhou explained to Lin Jia why he was so offended. He had inherited not only the wolf's strong abilities, but also its weaknesses. A wolf's nose contains more than 200 million olfactory cells capable of distinguishing more than 2 million different odors, so with such a sensitive sense of smell, it was difficult for a wolf to cope with harsh receptor stimuli. Zhou Zhou told Lin Jia that everyone would let their guard down, thinking that he had solved the enemy's trap, and calling himself a king, he turned out to be only a pathetic Lin Jia. Lin Jia shouted that he would kill Zhou Zhou. All he heard in response was that he had missed his chance. Zhou Zhou remembered how his brother had gathered all the power in his hands and directed it at Lin Jia, but even that couldn't kill him. Lin Jia was bleeding and couldn't say anything except that he couldn't die. Zhou Zhou said that the flames from the small incendiary bottles wouldn't work on him, so he decided to try something else, using the entire fuel supply at the gas station. Lin Jia objected that it wouldn't be able to kill him either. Zhou Zhou then threw a cocktail, saying that this place would be Lin Jia's grave. Zhou Zhou said goodbye to Lin Jia. At this time, Zhou Zhou's family was fighting off the zombies. Zhou Xu asked his father if everything was alright, to which he replied in the affirmative. Zhou Zhou's father saw that the sun had already risen. The zombies started to retreat. The entire Zhou family, Huang, NYU, Xia Bingbing all looked over with smiles on their faces. They were happy that everyone was unharmed. Zhou Zhou was returning home with victory. Suddenly, Zhou Zhou heard someone asking for help. It was Li Qin. Zhou Ying asked Zhou Zhou if he was a pervert, otherwise why would he undress a girl right in the middle of the street? In turn, Zhou Zhou explained that he just wanted to check Li Qin for bites. Just inspecting the external injuries wasn't enough to let her in. He warned his sister to be careful or else they might fall into a trap. Zhou Zhou added that he was shirtless himself, so it was fine. To this, Zhou Ying said that only a pervert would say that. Zhou Ying continued to tease her brother. She talked about how he was lucky that she stopped him in time, otherwise Xia Bingbing would have seen this and he would have been in trouble. Zhou Zhou didn't understand what she had to do with this at all. 
Xia Bingbing entered the room and said that she had examined Li Qin, she was fine, but she was very tired. She needs to get some sleep and everything will be fine. Sensing the tense atmosphere between Zhou Zhou and Zhou Ying, Xia Bingbing asked what was wrong. Zhou Ying replied that nothing had happened and it was good that Li Qin was fine. Zhou Zhou thanked Xia Bingbing for her help, to which she smiled and said that she didn't do anything wrong. Huang called Zhou Zhou to check if there were any survivors in the village, as it was only safe there during the day. Xia Bingbing hoped everyone was safe and sound. Zhou Zhou called Xia Bingbing back and told her that she shouldn't blame herself, even if she took precautions, the wave of zombies would be impossible to stop. Xia Bingbing was pleased with Zhou Zhou's attention, so she once again spread a smile and agreed with everything he said. From the car, Zhou Xu was telling his younger brother that he had finally become an adult. Zhou Zhou in turn said that this time it would be different. Zhou Xu didn't understand what his brother was talking about, because he was referring to his people skills. He told his younger brother that the two of them needed to get rid of all the corpses. They arrived at the place and burned all the corpses. Zhou Xu asked his brother if these were the last corpses, to which he answered in the affirmative. Zhou Zhua said that it is necessary to burn all the mutants, otherwise the animals that eat them will also be able to mutate. Zhou Xu wanted to sleep, so he told his brother that he needed to return home, and Zhou Zhua had to drive the car, wash it and fill the tank along the way, otherwise there would be no time later. In turn, Zhou Zhua reminded his brother that there was no more gas station and asked why he had to wash the car, and Zhou Xu replied that it was because his older brother said so. With a grin, Zhou Xu asked if his brother wanted this. Then Zhou Xu suggested playing according to the rules, and Zhou Zhua asked if his brother was sure that he could now win it. Zhou Zhua laughed and said that he was never afraid of the demon hunting game. The brothers loved this game to determine the winner and loser since childhood. The rules are as follows the hunter must stand still for 10 seconds, and the demon's task was to run away as far as possible. This time the demon was Zhou Zhua. Zhou Xu counted to 10, and at that time Zhou Zhua ran as hard as he could. When the countdown ended, Zhou Xu ran after his brother, reminding him that he also had the same abilities. Zhou Zhua felt an incredible surge of strength, he was able to jump onto a tree, break a huge, massive log and hold it with one hand. But defeating his brother was not so easy his strength was also extremely great. Zhou Zhua and Zhou Xu stood opposite each other, with a giant log balanced between them. Zhou Xu's strength was stronger and the log shattered into thousands of chips. Zhou Xu was afraid for his brother and thought that he might have hurt him. But suddenly Zhou Xu saw his younger brother at the top. He said that three minutes had passed and the demon had won. Zhou Xu asked his brother in surprise how he even got there, to which his brother replied that he pushed off well from the rock. Zhou Xu did not understand why his brother had such abilities, he asked Zhou Zhua if he had eaten the core. In turn, Zhou Zhua said something like that. Although in a past life he actually ate it. Zhou Zhua suggested that his ability, apparently, was like an effect. But his brother finished the conversation for him. Zhou Xu said that this is the power of borrowing. It turns out that Zhou Zhua could use his elder brother's ability, but their powers are different. Then Zhou Zhua tried to explain everything to his brother. He said that his ability, let's call it, Blood Buddha, is to increase speed, strength and more, and also enhance the body's defensive properties to withstand most physical damage, but so far Zhou Zhua only understood 70% of the power and strength of his ability. But that's not all. Zhou Zhua assumed that he could understand the core value of his brother's strength, but it was like a natural feeling, he could only measure it. Zhou Zhua assumed that if the average strength of an adult is 20, then speaking about his brother, strength and agility are about 90, physical strength is 95, and intelligence. Zhou Xu asked with a smile whether his intelligence had improved. In turn, Zhou Zhua replied that his intelligence was about zero, because his elder brother looked so stupid with that log. Zhou Xu told his brother that he put the zombie bear core in the desk drawer in his younger brother's room, as it might be useful to him in the future. Zhou Zhua said that he hoped that he would never need the core, but Zhou Xu replied that it was better to be prepared and he would wash the car today. Zhou Zhua suggested that his brother wash together, because he didn't want to leave a fool behind such a difficult job. All this time, Zhou Ying was listening to them behind the tree. 
At night, when Zhou Zhuo was already asleep, the younger sister snuck into his room and opened the box with the cannonball. She was happy and said that superpower was finally in her power was. In the morning, Zhou Zhuo prepared the ground and thought that all this was not fair. Mom Zhou told her son that he needed to start thinking about supplies and prepare the land. Zhou Zhuo thought that the elder brother was definitely free, but the younger Zhou was forced to plow again. He considered his mother biased. Meanwhile, Li Qin stood aside and reassured herself that everything would definitely be fine. She looked out from behind the house and called out to Zhou Zhuo. Li Qin said that she had been looking for Zhou Zhuo for a long time. In turn, Zhou Zhuo asked Li Qin if everything was okay, to which she replied that she just wanted to thank him for saving her. Zhou Zhuo only replied that he promised to help Li Qin and he fulfilled this promise, so there is no point in thanking him. But Li Qin asked if he could help her in the future. Unexpectedly, Zhou Zhuo said that he was refusing. Zhou Zhuo explained his behavior by saying that he promised to help, because Uncle Li took care of the Zhou family and now he has repaid the debt, so he no longer has a reason to help. Finally everything was clear and Zhou Zhuo thought only about his strength. He understood that it seemed that the bloody Buddha was not yet suitable for serious work and he needed to train more to improve his control. Someone knocked on Zhou Zhuo's gate and loudly asked if he was at home. On the threshold he saw Uncle Nu and Wan. They went into the house and told Zhou Zhuo that no one had survived in the village. Xia Bingbing asked for forgiveness, but Zhou Zhuo said that there is no need to blame yourself, because the wave of zombies cannot be stopped even if all precautions are taken. He claimed that they had done their best when he ventured to explore the village. Uncle Nu wondered what they should do now. Then Zhou Zhuo said that we need to take a shower, relax, and then have dinner together, no matter what happens, because the main thing is that everyone is alive. Zhou Ying's clothes were too small for Xia Bingbing. She thought about how strange she looked. Xia's thoughts were interrupted by Zhou's mother. She called Xia Bingbing and said that everything was ready. Everyone was already sitting at the table. Smiling, mom said Xia sits down next to Zhou Zhuo. She answered in the affirmative. Zhou Zhuo handed her a can of cola. Then Father Zhou raised his glass and said that everyone was finally assembled and everyone was aware of the current situation. The only survivors of Qingshan village are now at this table. Communication had still not been restored, and they did not know how things were in other places, but they had to survive. The father's pep talk continued. He said that, faced with a wave of zombies, they were able to survive, which means now everyone is one big family and must help and work together in order not only to survive, but also to live in abundance. Then everyone raised their drinks and drank for unity. Ying's hands, and it began to make strange sounds. Zhou Zhuo asked what was wrong with her and Zhou Ying then suddenly attacked her. Zhou Ying bit Zhou Zhuo, but he was under the powers of the Red Buddha. The whole family asked what happened to Zhou Ying. Her father told Zhou Ying to detach herself from her brother and say directly if something was bothering her. Then Li Qin appeared in the room and the sister began to calm down. Zhou Zhuo asked his sister if she had woken up. The whole family was shocked, they asked Zhou Ying if everything was okay. Zhou Ying asked her brother for help because there were too many people. Zhou Zhuo realized that something was wrong and told the family that the whole reason for this strange behavior was that his sister drank too much soda, so he would go outside with her to let Zhou Ying ventilate, and he told the others not to worry and eat. On the street, Zhou Ying sat with tears in her eyes and did not understand why she almost attacked her family. Zhou Zhuo already knew what exactly happened. Then he asked his sister why she ate the kernel and why she thought that she would always be so lucky. Zhou Ying only asked for forgiveness and said that she also wanted to have superpower. Zhou Zhuo understood that this time his sister really took him by surprise. He worried that if he had not felt something was wrong from the very beginning, things might have turned out differently. Zhou Zhuo decided to teach his sister how to control power. The brother told Zhou Ying to close her eyes and feel the power. She had to think of power as a flow of air that filled her body. Zhou Ying's ability was already part of her. She had to rediscover the world now that she had this ability. Then Zhou Ying saw the flow of life. She seemed to be able to control these flows. Zhou Ying accelerated the growth of the potatoes that Zhou Zhuo had planted just this morning. Zhou Ying asked her brother if he could do this, to which Zhou Zhuo replied that, apparently, yes. 
Zhou guessed that now the problem with supplies would be solved and the family would have a lot of vegetables and fruits. Zhou Ying did not like the idea that her ability would be used for farming. Zhou Ying thought that she would emit laser beams, control thunder, or transform into a supergirl. In the end, she turned out to be just a good farmer and now it seemed to her that this would not be fair. The likelihood that Zhou Ying would gain the ability by eating the zombie core was extremely low, but it awakened in his brother and sister. This was clearly not a matter of simple luck. Zhou Zhu knew that this had something to do with his ability. In the morning, a rooster crowed suddenly. Zhou Zhu grabbed him by the throat and told him to be quiet. Then Zhou Zhu saw Uncle Nyo and Huan. Zhou Zhu asked Uncle Nyo where he got the rooster from early in the morning. In turn, Uncle Nyo showed the chicken and said that he personally raised them so that later she would lay eggs. A couple of years ago, the village's main farm was short of labor, so the village committee asked Uncle Nyo and Huang to help. When the work came to an end, they were given a chicken and a rooster, which Uncle Nyo has kept since then. Wan said that at that time he just ate them. Zhou Zhuo remembered that the farm was not that far away. They went to the farm to take with them as many birds as possible to breed them at home, and also to take with them eggs with unborn chicks. Wan looked at the zombies and asked if they would suddenly turn into zombies. They noticed that the zombies looked like they had been slaughtered. Zhou Zhuo reassured everyone that zombies do not appear in the middle of the day, the main thing is not to go to the basement, where the sun's rays do not reach. One said that they still don't know what is happening outside, because most likely everyone in the village is already dead. Uncle Nu did not understand how this was possible, because people have many effective weapons and, perhaps, help will soon reach them. Zhou Zhuo said that it is better not to have hopes, since the worst thing is not the zombies themselves, but the zombie virus, so the consequences of it for the world go far beyond the scope of human imagination and one can only hope for oneself. Then Wan saw many eggs. Zhou Zhuo asked if they would be suitable, and Uncle Nyo said that with the proper temperature and humidity it would be possible to carry out artificial incubation. Wan wondered why there were so many eggs and not a single chicken. Zhou Zhuo also didn't understand what was going on, because even if they all died, at least their bodies would remain. Suddenly Zhou Zhuo heard and then saw a Guo heard. Seeing the goose, Wan said that they were very lucky because there were surviving animals here. Huang asked Zhou Zhuo to give them a bag, because when they worked here, he was responsible for catching birds for slaughter, so catching a bird was a breeze for him. Wan explained that when you need to grab a goose, you don't need to grab it by the neck. The goose had to be taken by the wings, and then carefully under the underbelly. Thus, he is caught off guard and cannot resist. Having tied the wings of the goose, you can safely put it in a bag and the job is done. While Wan was explaining the technology of goose catching, the bird began to turn into something terrible and tried to bite Wan. Zhou Zhuo quickly grabbed it by the beak. There was something wrong here. Wan asked what it was. Then Zhou Zhuo said that it was necessary to leave. They ran out of the farm and suddenly stopped when they saw a flock of mutant geese. Zhou Zhuo shouted where to run and they rushed as hard as they could. A crowd of geese was catching up with them. Zhou Zhuo understood that Brother Huang and Uncle Nyo were too slow and they would definitely not be able to break away from the mutated geese. Then Zhou Zhuo tried to make a wall of plants and succeeded in slowing them down. Zhou Zhuo shouted that they should run faster, but the geese were also in front. They surrounded them. Then Zhou Zhuo decided to run everyone inside. They managed to fight back. Uncle Nyo said that now they were stuck here for a long time, and if Zhou Zhuo could still escape, then he and Huang would definitely not have enough strength. Zhou Zhuo said that they were in danger because he was not careful and now he will do everything to ensure that all three return safe and sound. If Zhou Zhuo tried to carry them on himself using the ability of the bloody Buddha, then they would have the opportunity to escape. But he didn't know if they could escape from the zombie geese. After all, if they caught up with them by the time their strength ran out, then everything would be lost. Then Wan saw the computer and realized that the farm still had power. And once it turns on, it means you can connect to the network and find a way. Zhou Zhuo asked Brother Huang to hurry up because the door would not hold up for long. Wan was in a hurry and promised that he would definitely find something that could help them. Then Zhou Zhuo decided to attack first. He was able to open the door. There were a lot of geese. 
Zhou Zhuo was able to fight off the geese and secured a couple more minutes. Uncle Nyo asked Huang to hurry up, because from the sounds of it, Zhou Zhuo was having a hard time there. Huang assured that there was very little left and Zhou Zhuo needed to hold out a little longer, since after reloading this file everything would end. Meanwhile, Zhou Zhuo saw a huge scary creature in front of him. He didn't understand what the hell this was. The mutant made terrible sounds, then Zhou Zhuo entered into battle with him, but he did not have enough strength to overcome such a mutant. He fell to the floor. Uncle Nyo came out and ordered Zhou Zhuo to take Huan and run away, and he, in turn, promised to buy them some time. Zhou Zhuo did not want to leave Uncle Nyo, but he told him not to hesitate, otherwise everyone here would die. But Zhou Zhuo promised that everyone would return home, so he said that no one would stay here. Zhou Zhuo felt as if the energy of the abilities of accelerating growth and increasing strength were intertwined together. It was so unusual, because all his insides. Then Zhou Zhuo hit him with such force that I could defeat the zombies. Zhou Zhuo didn't understand what kind of power it was and why the blow was so powerful, and now he couldn't even move his hand. Suddenly the geese flew out from around the corner again. Suddenly, music was heard throughout the farm. The geese began to leave and then one appeared. He asked if everyone was safe and if everything was in order. Uncle Nu didn't understand why those zombie geese just left. Wan explained that he used the computer to log in and set off the meal alarm. All the animals on the farm already knew this melody, so when they heard it, they immediately rushed to the feeding place. Everyone was driving home with eggs, which Nu managed to take when Wan showed how to properly grab a goose. Zhou Zhuo was worried that the eggs might be mutated, because they were just over a week old and the zombie birds would not have time to Meanwhile, Zhou Ying, on behalf of Commander-in-Chief Zhou, outlined the further plan of action. She asked everyone to pay attention. The security team is responsible for patrolling and constructing defensive structures, Papa Zhou, Zhou Xu, and Huang were in charge of it. According to Zhou Ying, the agriculture group included her and Uncle Nyo. They were responsible for growing crops and raising livestock. Zhou Ying said that as a magic farmer she would do everything in the best possible way. Next came the resource distribution group, which included Mother Zhou and Li Qin. They were responsible for keeping records, spending supplies and resources, and planning their use. The last reconnaissance team included Zhou Zhua and Xia Bingbing. This group was the eyes and ears. They will have to search for resources and analyze the environment. Zhou Ying then said that everyone should start preparing and the meeting was over. Little sister enthusiastically asked Zhou Zhuo about her performance, to which Zhou Zhuo praised little sister. Zhou Zhuo understood that the sortie needed to be carefully prepared. He checked the backpack for weapons, Molotov cocktails, and a first aid kit, because it was no longer possible to repeat the mistakes of the past. Suddenly, Li Qin came up to Zhou Zhuo from behind and pinched him. She asked Zhou Zhuo to take her with him. Li Qin said that she was afraid of Zhou Ying and just wanted to go with Zhou Zhuo, because she knew every corner of the village and there were enough supplies for two. Li Qin argued that they would definitely be able to survive until help arrived. Li Qin promised Zhou Zhuo to rely on him in everything and do whatever was necessary. In turn, Zhou Zhuo told her that if Li Qin told him to leave the family again, she would be thrown out of the Zhou family's house and left on the street. In addition, Zhou Zhuo reminded the girl that she was the first to leave him. Zhou Zhuo left the room, and Xia Bingbing was already waiting for him at the door. They came towards the fishery. Zhou Zhuo said that it was too far away. Xia Bingbing suggested that there weren't many fishermen here before and asked who opened it in that case. Zhou Zhuo told the girl that this farm belonged to Lin Jia and Zhou Zhuo himself found this place by accident. Xia Bingbing asked Zhou Zhuo why Lin Jie despised the student so much. Then Zhou Zhuo told her the whole story from the beginning. It all started back in high school. Back then, Lin Jie considered himself superior to others because of his family's money and thought that everyone should obey him. Zhou Zhuo was against it and every time he competed with him, he managed to gain the upper hand. Then Zhou Zhuo began to communicate closely with Li Qin and Lin Jie tried every time to show his best side in front of the girl, to gain her attention. In fact, he didn't like Li Qin at all, and even often insulted her in public. His goal was only to take revenge on Zhou Zhuo. However, Zhou Zhuo didn't care because Li Qin had to choose who she should be with. 
Then Zhou Zhua's story was interrupted by Xia Bingbing. She asked him about the rumors about Zhou Zhua and Li Qin's marriage. Then he continued his story, and Xia Bingbing found out that it was an adult decision, no one asked them. The parents planned for the children to get married right after their high school graduation because they were so close. Xia Bingbing, in turn, said that such a love should not lead to marriage so quickly. Zhou Zhua shouted that there was a large storage room in the basement, but the door of the freezer that was located there was closed with a very complex and strange mechanism. Xia Bingbing asked Zhou Zhua if he knew about this place. Zhou Zhua said that he had only heard a little from Lin Jia, but he suggested trying his luck anyway. Thoughts flashed through Zhou Zhua's head that in a previous life he had wandered here by mistake when he was trying to hide from a crowd of zombies. There were plenty of food supplies there, thanks to which he was able to survive for a long time. However, when he arrived here, the electricity had already been turned off. Then the guy managed to turn on the backup power source in time to prevent the food from spoiling, but this time the electricity was not turned off. Something definitely changed because this time they stopped the first wave of zombies. This meant that there could be survivors here. Suddenly, Xia Bingbing screamed and said that she was careless. Zhou Zhuo was afraid for her. Xia Bingbing noticed the strange fish heads that swam in front of her in the aquarium. Zhou Zhuo reacted in time, because these were mutant zombies. Defeating the fish was not so easy because they were ranked 2 zombies. Zhou Zhuo flew into the wall. Xia Bingbing asked if he was safe. Zhou Zhuo shouted at her to leave because they couldn't be dealt with here. Suddenly, Zhou Zhuo saw that the vault door had claw that the vault The door to the storage room did not open. There was no time to fiddle with the door anymore, so Zhou Zhuo attacked the monster to escape. Xia Bingbing looked at what was happening with fear. The scales of the fish were like armor, and Zhou Zhuo could not cut them. Zhou Zhuo rushed at the fish, but it was all covered with these tough scales, but there must have been some weak point. Zhou Zhuo attacked the fish from behind and tried to plunge a knife directly into the gills, but mutated worms emerged from them, which usually live in the gills of fish and coexist with them, protecting the wearer in times of danger. The fish attacked Zhou Zhuo and threw him aside. Zhou Zhuo shocked him. Although many things were different from past events, these were mostly random non-key events. Xia Bingbing asked if Zhou Zhuo was safe. Zhou Zhuo replied that everything was fine, but it was not safe here and he needed to return quickly. Xia Bingbing tried to open the door, but nothing worked. She assumed it was as if someone had locked her from the outside. Zhou Zhuo asked Xia Bingbing to leave. Zhou Zhuo tried to open it with his strength, but nothing worked because the material of this door is strong, like a bank vault. Moreover, it is also underground. This door is not easy to open with brute force. Zhou Zhuo said that this was his strongest blow at the moment, because the door could not be opened. Zhou Zhuo was exhausted and decided that he needed a little rest. Xia Bingbing told him to rest, and she went to inspect the place because she hoped that there might be another way out. Xia Bingbing returned and said that she found nothing after looking in every corner. The temperature was about minus 18 degrees and they would not have lasted long here. Even if Xia Bingbing and Zhou Zhuo could withstand the cold, the air would definitely run out sooner or later. There was no time to hesitate. Zhou Zhuo decided to try again, but Xia Bingbing showed him the core. Xia Bingbing asked if it was true that if she ate this, she would gain powers like Zhou Zhuo. Zhou Zhuo started yelling at Xia Bingbing. He asked if she even knew what it meant and it was too dangerous. Zhou Zhuo explained to Xia Bingbing that it was too dangerous and she could not use her power all the time, and the effect was also limited. But Xia Bingbing tried to convey to Zhou Zhuo that otherwise they would both die here, so she decided to take a risk and hope that she could survive, and the awakened ability would allow her to get out of this place. At this time, Dad Zhou and Zhou Xu were called Zhou Zhuo and Xia Bingbing. The father cursed and asked where this brat had gone. I couldn't hear the guys at all. Zhou Xu told his father that if things went like this, they wouldn't make it before nightfall. Suddenly, Zhou Xu and father heard the sound of zombies. The father asked if zombies only came out at night, but Zhou Xu did not understand anything except that something was clearly wrong. Zhou Xu said that it was Huang Tao. At this time, Someone stood and smiled behind stood and sp Xia Bingbing woke up Zhou Zhuo. When Zhou Zhuo woke up, 
he saw Xia Bingbing sitting with a sniper gun. Xia Bingbing told Zhou Zhuo that there was work to do. Outside the walls, on the street, there were four huge dogs of the fourth rank and two tigers of the sixth rank. Zhou Zhuo guessed that in about twenty minutes, thousands of zombies would return here because of them, so it was necessary to notify the others. Xia Bingbing said that this is only possible if she deals with the leader. This would make it possible to gain as much time as possible. Zhou Zhuo was worried about Xia, but she argued that his abilities had not yet returned and his presence would only hinder her. Zhou Zhuo didn't understand why nothing happened if he ate the zombie core. The ability should have already awakened. Zhou Zhuo then told Xia Bingbing that she must survive. Zhou Zhuo woke up from Xia Bingbing's words. He saw that Xia Bingbing was burning all over. Zhou Zhuo asked why this was happening, but Xia herself did not know the reason. Her whole body felt like it was on fire. Her whole body was engulfed in heat and she was sweating. Zhou Zhuo was shocked by what was happening. He told Xia Bingbing to wait a moment to bring her some ice. Xia Bingbing continued to undress, but Zhou Zhuo asked her not to do so. In turn, she said not to look. But Zhou Zhuo immediately turned away and did not look at the naked Xia. Xia Bingbing said that she sees a lot of zombies and they are everywhere. Zhou Zhuo reassured her, asked her not to panic, because this was her ability, receptivity. Xia Bingbing saw that there were many zombies on the lower floor. Zhou Zhuo discovered a secret door underneath them. Xia Bingbing smelled a strange smell, to which Zhou Zhuo said that it was the smell of sulfur. This smell came from the fact that Lin Jie's family used this place to illegally store gunpowder. Zhou Zhuo realized that all the doors and equipment were still working because a lot of money had been spent on it all. Fishing was just a cover, and the freezer was built only as a diversion. The guys heard the sounds of zombies. Zhou Zhuo explained to Xia Bingbing that the room was too dark, he couldn't see anything, so he relied on Xia Bingbing. She began to worry about this responsibility. Zhou Zhuo insisted that everything would work out, and Xia Bingbing believed him unconditionally. Xia Bingbing suggested that the first zombie was 10 meters straight away. Zhou Zhuo destroyed the first zombies his friend saw, then Xia said that the next ones were 2 meters to the left and 2 more to the right, and 2 more 4 meters to the left. They were behind, to the right, everywhere. After dealing with the zombies, Zhou Zhuo and Xia Bingbing entered the door in front of them. This room turned out to be a dead end. Zhou Zhuo suggested that if they swam through the pipe, they could end up directly in the pond outside. Zhuo and Xia swam through the pipe. Xia Bingbing only thought that they would finally be able to get out, and she couldn't help but be happy that her ability was useful. Suddenly a huge zombie fish appeared in the water. Xia was pulled towards the fish's mouth, Zhou Zhuo tried to pull her hand, but Xia let go of him and found herself right between the fish's self right between Zhou Zhuo could not leave Xia Bingbing in trouble this time either. Then, using his ability, he wrapped green threads around the fish and quickly swam towards it. Xia Bingbing woke up by the fire. She was covered with a jacket. When she woke up, she called Zhou Zhuo. Zhou Zhuo heated up the canned food and said that it would be possible to eat and gain strength, because the local fish is not worth eating. Xia Bingbing thanked him and asked what happened to this huge fish. All that Xia Bingbing remembered before she passed out was how Zhou Zhuo swam towards her. Xia said that this fish was more difficult to handle than the one in the freezer. Zhou Zhuo thought that such mutated fish had already spread beyond this place and similar things would happen everywhere. Such consequences can no longer be avoided. Xia Bingbing said that Zhou Zhuo was always so silent at the university. Then she thought that Zhou Zhuo would not be easy to get along with and they almost never crossed paths, but since the zombie invasion, Zhou Zhuo saves her again and again, even sometimes risking his life. Xia Bingbing asked why he was willing to risk his life for her. Zhou Zhuo told Xia that he actually saved her before because of the ability that Xia Bingbing had, because this ability helped protect the family. Xia Bingbing asked him what has changed now. There was a pause between the guy and the girl, which was interrupted by Xia Bingbing. She asked Zhou Zhuo when they would return. Zhou Zhuo said that they need to move out immediately because with Xia's ability, they can avoid collisions with zombies. Xia Bingbing and Zhou Zhuo returned home successfully. Zhou Ying rushed towards them with hugs. She said that she was very worried about them. 
Zhou Zhua asked his sister why she was so worried and if nothing had happened, to which Zhou Ying suggested it was better to go home. When Zhou Zhuo went inside the house, he saw that Huang was tied to a chair and he was infected. Zhou Xu told his brother that they went in search of Zhou Zhuo and Xia Bingbing, but on the way they came across a hidden group of zombies. Zhou Xu wanted to find a rank 2 zombie to get the core and save Huang, but nothing worked out. Uncle Niu was incredibly upset and asked if it was possible to save him. Zhou Zhuo understood that nothing would work, since the virus had already reached the brain and even if Huang ate the zombie core now, Huang would become the same monster as Lin Jia. All Wan said was that he didn't want to become a zombie. Zhou Zhuo understood that there was no choice. Then Mom Zhou appeared behind. Zhou Zhuo told his mother to follow him. When they stepped aside, Zhou Zhuo asked his mother to eat the kernel he was holding in his hand. Mom Zhou asked her son where he got the same core that Zhou Xu gave to Huang Tao. Zhou Zhuo said that they don't have time and mom should quickly eat the kernel. Mom Zhou did not understand what all this was about, because she was not infected. Then Zhou Zhuo told her that it would take a long time to explain everything, so he just asked her to believe him. Everything was interrupted by Zhou Xu's cry that he could not hold Huang for long. Zhou Zhuo ran as fast as he could. He understood that if Huang finally became a zombie until his mother's ability awakened, then something urgently needed to be done. Huang screamed and asked Zhou Zhuo to kill him. Zhou Zhuo picked up the dagger and asked Huang to forgive him. In turn, Brother Huang turned to his wife and said that they would finally meet again. Zhou Zhuo was ready to kill Huang, but his mother suddenly appeared in the room. There was a blue shell around her, she had the ability, thanks to which she was able to cure Wan. Mom Zhou looked different than usual. She seemed younger, her hair was long and she was extraordinarily beautiful. Zhou Xu and Zhou Ying were shocked that it was their mother. Papa Zhou was also shocked, he asked why his wife suddenly became like this. Mom didn't understand why everyone was looking at her like that. Zhou Zhuo explained that mom's purification ability had awakened and that light had healed Huang of the zombie virus. Zhou Ying hugged her mother and said that thanks to this ability, she began to look so young. Zhou Zhuo, in turn, said that these changes are due to the fact that abilities can also change a person's appearance. To this, Zhou Ying asked if they could cure her acne. Zhou Xu asked if in this case mom could turn all zombies back into normal people, but Zhou Zhuo said to forget about it, since the ability can only heal a person who has not yet become a zombie completely, and those who have already become zombies, mom's ability can only kill. Father Zhou was happy and said that now they need not be afraid of infection, because his little wife can easily cure them. Mom Zhou said that she understood about the ability, but something did not give her peace. She asked her son how he knew that he could save one this way. The mother had the feeling that her son was sure of this from the very beginning. Zhou Zhuo tried to find an excuse for this, so he said that in the moment he felt that it was she who could awaken the appropriate ability. In addition, this was the case with the abilities of the brother and sister, but then this feeling was not so strong. Zhou Zhuo did not sense Xia Bingbing's ability, nor could he borrow her power. Zhou Zhuo understood that this was most likely due to the fact that he could only copy his family's abilities. When one of them awakens abilities, he becomes stronger. Zhou Zhuo spoke to Xia Bingbing. He apologized for disturbing her, but he needed to find out how many zombies were in the area. Using her abilities, Xia Bingbing saw that in the forest, on the other side of the mine, there were about a hundred zombies, and at the foot of the mountain there were also about a hundred. Zhou Zhuo asked if there were second-rank zombies there, to which Xia Bingbing answered in the affirmative, there were three of them. Zhou Zhuo thought about his plan of action. He clearly understood that dad, Wan and Uncle Nu would cope with the zombies. Now the whole family was in full combat readiness. Zhou Zhuo's positive mood was interrupted by Xia Bingbing. He said the zombies were on the move. All the zombies were moving in the same direction, as if they were gathering in one place. It became clear that they were all moving towards Lin Jie. Zhou Zhuo did not understand how he survived, because he saw with his own eyes how he was torn to pieces. Then they realized what had happened. Xia Bingbing guessed that it was Lin Jie who locked them in the freezer back then. Zhou Zhuo realized that attacking Huang and the others was part of Lin Jie's plan. Xia Bingbing spoke about the need to tell others to be careful. Zhou Zhuo guessed that Lin Jie would now try to gather as many zombies around him as possible. 
But instead of waiting for them to come, the Zhou family would attack first and take them by surprise. Zhou Zhuo walked through the forest and called out to Lin Jie. Then Lin Jie responded and said that Zhou Zhuo himself had come for his death. Zhou Zhuo said that last time he himself almost died, but Lin Jie interrupted his words with a shout and demanded to be silent. Zhou Zhuo shined a lantern on Lin Jie and a fountain of blood sprayed from his stomach. Zhou Zhuo realized that he was right and there were no wounds on his body. Then it didn't hit the reservoir directly, but it was able to plant a dirty trick. Zhou Zhuo called Lin Jie a coward. In turn, Lin Jie said that Zhou Zhuo is too arrogant and no matter how much he hurts him, you are alone here. Zhou Zhuo pretended to know nothing and asked who Lin Jie came with and whether he had an army. Zhou Zhuo said that he knew everything in advance and now Lin Jie would definitely die. Father Zhou appeared with a Molotov cocktail in his hands and said that he had been waiting too long. He said that all zombies are now just ashes. Zombies attacked Zhou's parents, but mom and dad confidently dealt with them. Mom Zhou said that she dealt with everyone at once thanks to her, and truly excellent, ability. Papa Zhou hugged his wife and said how great she was. In turn, Zhou's mother called Xia Bingbing and asked her they should go next. Using her abilities, Xia Bingbing directed Zhou's parents to the northwest, where there were 24 more zombies. Mom Zhou asked if they were okay, to which Xia Bingbing said that they were in the basement and there was a guard at the entrance. Over the radio, Xia Bingbing asked if Zhou Xu could cope alone, but he reassured her that these weaklings would not be enough to defeat him. Papa Zhou claimed that these zombies never dreamed of it, but they all showed up here. Zhou Xu said that everything was thanks to Xia Bingbing and her instructions. The entire family was happy that they had Xia Bingbing, who had such useful abilities. Xia Bingbing said that she was just guiding the Zhou family and there was no great merit in it. Meanwhile, Zhou Zhuo continued his battle with Lin Jie. Zhou Zhuo repelled all his attacks, but Lin Jie did not want to lose. Zhou Zhuo asked if he really thought he had a chance to get out. Zhou Zhuo told him that it was all over. Xia Bingbing shouted that Zhou Zhuo needed to be careful because three rank 2 zombies were heading straight towards him. The rank 2 zombie rats surrounded Zhou Zhuo. Despite their size, Zhou Zhuo knew that they had no fighting strength at all. Zhou Zhuo was surprised that Lin Jie actually thought of defeating him so easily. Lin Jie, in turn, was confident that these rats would help him. Then Lin Jie took out three cores and ate them. His strength has increased significantly. Lin Jie became a third stage mutant. Zhou Zhuo understood that the rank 3 mutant would need to be attacked with all his might. Zhou Zhuo ran at him at full speed with a dagger in his hands, but Lin Jie repelled the attack. Lin Jie laughed and asked if this was all Zhou Zhuo's ability. Lin Jie asked if this was the limit of his abilities. Zhou Zhuo did not have enough strength to attack Lin Jie, then, using his abilities, he was able to escape underground. Lin Jie was surprised by his skills, but still promised to find and finish him, and then the whole family. Zhou Zhuo climbed out of the tree and his head was filled with the power of a rank 3 mutant. In his previous life, Zhou Zhuo had not met such mutants, so he did not think that he could be so strong. Zhou Zhuo knew that even with the help of Zhou Xu and Mama Zhou, he was unlikely to be able to defeat Lin Jie. It was necessary to come up with something. Zhou Zhuo noticed that the moon in the sky was red. It's not like what a tier 3 mutant zombie can do. Suddenly the red shell in the sky collided with the same blue one. There was someone else there. Lin Jia appeared. He asked Zhou Zhuo whether he decided to take a break and whether he really underestimated the third rank mutant that much. Lin Jia demolished everything in his path, and now Zhou Zhuo was already lying driven into an asphalt crack. Lin Jie asked Zhou Zhuo why he didn't use his ability to escape. Since Zhou Zhuo could not escape, Lin Jie said that he would die. Something incredibly terrible was happening in the sky. Suddenly everything seemed to freeze, his body stopped moving, but it seemed that he could still use his abilities. What was happening in the sky began to dissipate. Then Lin Jie suddenly grabbed his eyes with his hands, and when he removed his hands from his face, it became clear that Lin had decided to open his eyes. Zhou Zhuo called out to Zhou Xu. He asked if his brother was safe. Lin Jie ran into the forest. Zhou Zhuo told his brother about this and asked him to find him as soon as possible, as the world began to change. 
the two figures that appeared in the sky have abilities that are difficult to abilities that In a past life, in a survivor camp, a man informed the boss that the only survivor from Qingshan village was left, he turned out to be Zhou Zhuo. The boss asked how many zombies were in the village, to which Zhou Zhuo said that there were a lot of them, about a thousand or even more. Those remaining in the camp said that this was not so much, calling them another garbage dump. The boss asked what ranks of zombies and how many. To which Zhou Zhuo replied that there was only one rank for zombie. The boss called Zhou Zhuo to try on the chain. Turning around, Zhou Zhuo saw a pillar to which the slaves were tied. He started to run, but the boss did not want to give him such a chance. The boss said that they were a new generation of superhumans chosen by God, and pathetic weaklings were only fit to be their slaves. Now in his current life, Zhou Zhuo again came to the place where he noticed a strange glow yesterday. He thought it had something to do with ability holders. Zhou Zhuo didn't remember much about people who had gained abilities and reached a high stage of development, except that some of them turned out to be scum. Zhou Zhuo knew that he needed to deal with this as quickly as possible. Suddenly he saw a hole in the ground, it was a crater. There was some kind of vessel inside it and Zhou Zhuo suggested that it was this thing that caused the crater to appear. Zhou Zhuo had an incredible desire to consume it. As soon as he brought his hand close to this thing, Someone told him to take his hand away and Zhou Zhuo flew away a fair distance. Zhou Zhuo asked who it was. The man who emerged from this strange object asked Zhou Zhuo if he was one of the embroiderers. The man told Zhou Zhuo that he had good potential, which should be further developed. He held Zhou Zhuo's hand. He, in turn, said to let him go and asked who this man was. Then the man introduced himself. His name was Gao Xiaobei. He also said that he was in the third stage of development. Zhou Zhuo immediately tried to hit Gao Xiaobei, but it was to no avail. Gao Xiaobei laughed at the fact that Zhou Zhuo could not stand his provocation and said that there was no point in attacking him. Gao Xiaobei then asked Zhou Zhuo to relax and explained that he had not come for his family, not for him, but for this crystal core. Zhou Zhuo asked Gao Xiaobei what kind of core this was, to which the man said in surprise that he thought he knew and that's why he was here. Gao Xiaobei assumed that Zhou Zhuo acquired his abilities not long ago. Then Gao Xiaobei asked Zhou Zhuo if he had played computer games and explained that this crystal core was something like an item for increasing strength. Those who have abilities can increase their strength by eating zombie cores, but the maximum that can be achieved in this way is the fourth stage, and to climb even higher, it is necessary to absorb crystalline cores. Gao Xiaobei handed Zhou Zhuo some of the crystals. Then Zhou Zhuo assumed that he was giving them to him for a reason and asked what he needed. Gao Xiaobei said that he would need Zhou Zhuo's help in one matter in the future, but until then, he had better increase his cultivation stage. Gao Xiaobei reminded at the end that there are also deities in this world. After that, he disappeared into the Zhou Zhuo wondered about the existence of gods and how this was possible. Then he remembered words from a past life that there are people with the highest stage of development of abilities, which are a new milestone for humanity. Zhou Zhuo understood that in this case the end of the world was somehow connected with them. Suddenly, a blue crystal somehow appeared from the crater with the core, it hit Zhou Zhuo and he flew away like a whirlwind. The family was looking for Zhou Zhuo, they were screaming and calling for him. Zhou Xu found it strange that today was supposed to be sunny, but now suddenly there was fog. Zhou Ying was sure that even in such weather conditions they would find their brother. In the fog, Zhou Ying saw a human silhouette and ran towards him with the words gotcha, because she mistook him for Zhou Zhuo. However, it turned out to be a zombie. He turned to the girl and she started screaming. Then the zombies suddenly entwined the green stems and Zhou Xu appeared behind Zhou Ying, who calmed his sister. Suddenly they noticed another silhouette. Zhou Ying mistook him for a ghost, but Zhou Xu convinced her that ghosts do not exist and are just shadows from trees. As the silhouette approached, it became clear that it was not a shadow, but the man just as quickly disappeared. Then Zhou Xu and Zhou Ying saw a blue stream gushing from the ground. Zhou Ying was frightened and asked her brother what it was, an explosion or something else. Zhou Xu said that the easiest way is to go and check. Zhou Xu ordered his sister to go home, and he decided to go and have a look. Zhou Ying wanted to go with her brother, but he said to listen to him and instantly ran towards the strange phenomenon. Zhou Ying did not listen to her brother, 
and using her abilities, she ran after him. Stopping, he asked why she didn't listen to her older brother, but the girl argued that it was dangerous here and help would not hurt him. The brother and sister saw a blue ball in front of them, inside of which was Zhou Zhuo. Zhou Xu asked him not to move and said that he would help, however, his blows were unable to break the shell. Suddenly Zhou Zhuo opened his eyes and was able to fly even Zhou Zhuo woke up in his room. Standing nearby was Zhou Ying, who was happy that her brother had finally woken up. Then the rest of the family entered the room. Zhou Xu said that Zhou Zhuo was passed out all day and scared everyone very much. Mong Zhou said that her son had gone so far, although he had not yet fully recovered. Only Papa Zhou calmed everyone down. He asked everyone to relax. Zhou Zhuo only wondered what it was all about. In response, Xia Bingbing said that Zhou Zhuo was completely covered in blue light, and then found himself inside some kind of huge ball. Zhou Ying asked where Zhou Zhuo went. At this time, Zhou Zhuo saw a blue light around his sister and information about her. Around Zhou Ying was written her age, her name, the ability she possesses, the probability of development needed to increase her strength and increase her cultivation stage. Zhou Zhuo didn't understand why he could see all the information about people. The same thing happened around his mother. Xia Fan, 52 years old, the ability was purification, the first stage, to increase strength it is necessary a zombie core of the second rank, the probability of development to the fifth stage is indicated, etc. The same thing happened with his brother and everyone around him. If you believe this information, zombie cores of higher ranks were needed for higher stages of development, but the likelihood of increasing the stage is extremely low and the methods are also not clear yet, and if it suddenly doesn't work out, the consequences are unknown. Zhou Zhuo understood that although he had a crystal core, he could not use it yet. Time was too short, they should be here soon, so it was necessary to become stronger. Zhou's father told his son to get up and stop having his head in the clouds. At this time, Zhou Zhuo looked at his father and saw all the data about him. Zhou Zhuo stood up and asked his father not to make noise. Zhou Zhuo was shocked by the acquired ability. Zhou Ying asked where Zhou Zhuo was going, to which he replied that he had been lying around for the day and now wanted to go out into the yard. Zhou Xu understood that his brother was thinking about something, so it was better for them not to interfere for now. Xia Bingbing saw that Zhou Zhuo had woken up and said that she had finished cooking, so he could sit down to eat. Zhou Zhuo accepted the invitation because he was hungry as a wolf. Zhou Xu and Zhou Ying watched them from the balcony. Zhou Xu joked that they had just turned away, and his brother was already with Xia Bingbing. Zhou Ying replied that they became closer even after that night, and Zhou Xu only noticed this. Dad Zhou intervened in the conversation. He said that even his younger brother got a girlfriend, but Zhou Xu is still alone. Zhou Ying confirmed and agreed with her dad's words, because she remembered that her brother brought friends home, but never girls. Zhou Zhuo ate a hearty meal and asked if he had heard anything from Lin Jia. Xia Bingbing said that he was not in the field of view of her ability, and Zhou Xu, when he went out to investigate, did not find him. Zhou Zhuo knew that he was too careless, so last time he was a pathetic weakling who died during the zombie wave. Xia Bingbing said that when the zombies appeared, only Zhou Zhuo kept his cool and helped everyone escape danger. Then it seemed to her that no matter what happened, Zhou Zhuo could cope with all the obstacles on the way and Xia Bingbing could always rely on him, and even if someone stood in his way, he would defeat any opponent. Xia Bingbing said that Zhou Zhuo can share everything that weighs on him with her and with his family, because they are all one big family. Zhou Zhuo asked Xia Bingbing about the family, which made the Kopec piece embarrassed and said that she meant that she would like to become a family with them. Then she again began to make excuses and say that they were just so close. In turn, Zhou Zhuo reassured the girl and said that he already understood everything. Zhou Zhuo shouted that he needed to talk to the family members standing on the balcony. Zhou Zhuo told his family everything he saw and learned in the forest yesterday. Zhou Xu was interested in the zombie cores, Zhou Ying asked about the strong guy in the mountains of the third stage, and Xia Bingbing was surprised that they were not the only survivors from the village. The Zhou family was traveling in the car. Only Zhou's mother was confused by everything that was happening. She said that she didn't like all this, because in times of peace people could always live in harmony with each other, but now human nature takes over. 
sometimes people trying to survive can turn out to be worse than zombies, because their actions and decisions are filled with selfishness and cruelty. Joshua replied that this is why we need to be stronger, increase our cultivation stage, collect more resources and weapons to protect our home. The father praised his son for saying the right thing and added that if someone really attacked the Zhou family, they would choke on their own blood. The car stopped. Joshua got out of the car with his father. In front of them was the water industry. The father asked if this was the water farm he was talking about and whether there was a supply of gunpowder there. Joshua said that if his guesses were correct, then they would be able to get more than just gunpowder there. Suddenly, in the distance, they saw an explosion and guys appeared from the dust with machine guns in their hands. These were the first four parts, if you are looking forward to the continuation, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.